Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Continue on in our study of the hadith course, the second hadith an Ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu qal qala rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam buni al-islam ala khams shahadati an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad muhammad rasulullah muhammad rasulullah wa iqam al-salat wa ita'i al-zakat wa al-hajj wa al-sawmi ramadhan wa al-bukhari wa muslim it is reported on the authority of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma that he said Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Islam is built upon five pillars to testify that none is worthy of worship but Allah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah to perform the prayers to pay the zakat to perform the hajj to fast the holy month of Ramadan this is in Bukhari and Muslim in this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the mawdu or the subject of this hadith is the pillars of Islam. This hadith is a hadith which clearly gives us the pillars of Islam, the five pillars of Islam. It lets us know those pillars which are also mentioned in the hadith of Jibreel Alayhi Salatu Wasalam where Jibreel asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ya Muhammad Akhbirni al-Islam O Muhammad, tell me about Islam The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said Al-Islamu in and tashhadan la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah wa tukimu salah wa tutiyil zakat wa tusama Ramadan wa ta'ajjil bayt in istatata ilayhi sabil So those same arkan al-Islam, the five pillars of Islam were made clear in the hadith of Jibreel and with regarding the Hajj, the Prophet وسلم, said in the Hadith of Jibreel, in istata ilayhi sabil, if you are able to do so. So it was muqayyid, it was, uh, there's a shark, there's a condition that if you're able to perform the pilgrimage, pilgrimage meaning if you have the wealth, uh, if your health is okay, you're not elderly and sick, too sick to travel or whatever the case may be, or you don't have the means, or a woman who is singular, she who's singular, who's single, who cannot travel by herself without a muhrim. So these all uh, fall under that istata, that uh, ability to be able to do so. And likewise, that illustrates for us that all ibadah, uh, that this is a qaida, for all of our worship, this is a principle for all of our worship, which is if someone is able to fulfill that act of worship. If you're not able, then that act of ibadah will tusku. But salat is one of those things that does not stop. That uh, unless, of course, well, actually, the qaida does apply to salat because if you're if you're no longer able to perform salat, meaning you've lost consciousness, you lost your uh, your sanity. Those are ways in which, of course, Salat is not upon you because you are no longer able to perform the Salat. The Prophet said, Rufi Akalam an Talatha, that three people are excused. Uh, and one of them, Al Majnoon, had to Yufiq, or had to Istaykhith, or Naim had to Istaykhith. One of them is the sleeping person until they wake up. Another one is the na the naim until they uh, or the uh, the majnun had to yufit. The one who has lost their sanity until they regain their sanity. So all ibadah has to have qudra. It has to have ability to be able to fill those things. Uh, likewise, even the other pillars that they may have an expiation. For example, fasting has an expiation if you're unable to fulfill it. And the, of course, the shahada does not apply in that sense that, you know, you have to always believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's something that doesn't require necessarily a physical effort. But rather, 
that is something, you know, a part of your demand there. And of course, demand is comprised of uh, those, those pillars of three parts. Iman is comprised of how many parts? Three. Three. Those parts are the heart, the tongue, you know, speaking, like saying the Shahada, that's a part of Iman, and doing actions, deeds, that's also a part of your Iman. So going back to the uh, point of this Hadith, this Hadith illustrates for us the pillars of Islam. The one explaining this, the brother said, Allah's Messenger وسلم, informs us that in this hadith that Islam is built upon five pillars, testifying that none is worthy of worship but Allah, and that Muhammad وسلم, is the Messenger of Allah. Praying five times a day, paying zakat for those who have more than they need, meaning the prescribed limit. So that means also zakat also has a limit that if you don't have the ability to pay zakat, then you're not, uh, zakat will not be upon you. If you don't have wealth, if you don't own anything, you won't pay zakat. Uh, and, you know, getting the brother of the south of the sky. Performing the hajj, we already mentioned, for those who have the physical and material ability to do so, and fasting the holy month of Ramadan from dawn until dusk, abstaining from food, drink, and intimate relations. Increasing one's performance of good deeds such as prayer, reading the Quran, giving charity, and refraining from evil deeds such as backbiting, arguing, smoking, etc. A person's Islam, like any structure, will become shaky or even collapse if one or more of these pillars is removed. So very important that all of these are the pillars of Islam and we have to believe in all. And if a person who doesn't believe in the pillar, one pillar of the pillars, if they say, yes, I believe that Muhammad... I believe that Allah is the only one worthy of worship and Muhammad وسلم, is the last prophet and messenger. And I believe in uh, the praying five times a day and I pray five times a day. But I don't believe in zakat. I don't think it's an obligation. This person has left the fold of Islam with that statement. If they don't do it because they're weak any man, that's different. But if they believe that it's not an obligation upon them. No, I don't have to pay zakat. I, I, I live in America, I live in Canada, I live in the UK or France or Sweden. I really don't, I don't need to. It's just not from our custom. We pay taxes, that's enough. A person who says this, they have disbelief, they've fallen into an act of kufr or disbelief that takes them out of the fold of Islam. So it's very dangerous. So we believe in all the pillars of Islam because it's a pillar that means it's the strength, it is the foundation, it is what holds up your Islam. It is a part of your Islam and it is a pillar, it is something that holds it up. Like we have this bookcase, it has those legs, those are the pillars of this bookcase. It has one, two, three, three pillars or three legs or three, um, three, uh, three main parts. And what do they do? They hold up these shelves. They're the pillars of this bookcase. Likewise, your arkan, your pillars of Islam, they hold up your Islam. They are your Islam and they hold it up. The benefits derived from this hadith, as the, the brother mentioned, uh, that the pillars of Islam are five in numbers. Secondly, that the shahad attained is a pillar of Islam, that you that you bear witness that there's no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is his last prophet and messenger that uh, the prayer is a pillar of Islam that the zakat is a pillar of Islam that performing hajj is a pillar of Islam and fasting the month of Ramadan is a pillar of Islam so all of those are pillars of Islam those are the pillars, the foundation of Islam and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct is from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Anything I said that was incorrect is from myself and the Shaytan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.